But first this evening, Rinker Buck is a special kind of traveler. He heads out on unlikely journeys with a keen sense of history and a gift for storytelling. He has combined those two qualities in his new book, Life on the Mississippi. It chronicles his voyage down the Ohio and Mississippi rivers on a flatboat, the kind of vessel that once carried millions of Americans down those waterways. Rinker Buck used to live in Maine, graduated from Bowdoin College, and has family here. And we met on the banks of the Androscoggin River in Brunswick to talk about his remarkable trip and the book it produced. When you first had the idea for this sure. trip and you started to tell people about it, what you had in mind, did they think that you were crazy? They thought I was crazy. Even my brothers, both of them have Coast Guard experience. They would say, nah, 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 Rink, you're going to die. How much boating experience did you have when you started this journey? I canoed a little bit. I kayaked a little bit. I uh, sailed in sailboat races as an eight-year-old. That was it. I'd never captained a boat. Although Rinker Buck is passionate about history, he discovered a few years ago he knew almost nothing about the flatboat era, when from the late 1700s to the mid-1800s, millions of people went down the Ohio and Mississippi rivers and their tributaries and changed America forever. When I started investigating, I realized that it was not the covered wagons crossing the plains, but the flatboats traveling down the Ohio and the Mississippi that made the American economy. If you want to take a flatboat down the Ohio and Mississippi rivers, you don't just go to the local marina and buy that no. kind of a vessel. No. You had to build it yourself. Yes. Yeah, well, I went to a farm in Tennessee. Over a period of uh, three months, we built it out of green poplar. And uh, I never built a boat before, but, that's, but it wasn't that difficult. And that's the point. The flatboat era with a very flat bottom. If you could build a barn, if you could build a sluice for a mill, you could build a flatboat, and that's why it took off the way it did. The trip took four months. Buck traveled 2,000 miles down the Ohio and Mississippi rivers from Pittsburgh to New Orleans. People in Maine think of their rivers and traveling down the river and maybe do it by canoe, maybe do it by kayak, maybe do it by motorboat. These are beautiful rivers and they're really nice for recreational boating. Recreational boating is all but non-existent on the Ohio and the Mississippi, right? Right. Because of the barge traffic. There are tugboats, 9,000 horsepower tugboats, pushing 30 and 35 barges at once. Going down the Mississippi, I saw 1,000 miles of the Mississippi, I saw four, a total of four uh, pleasure boats. This was not Rinker Buck's first unconventional expedition across America. Several years ago, he rolled across the old Oregon Trail in a covered wagon pulled by mules. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing what you do learn <clears throat> after six weeks in about 900 miles of river travel. He travels with a sense of history, and the history of the flatboat era contains some ugly and inescapable truths. You had Indian removal in 1830. As soon as the settlers got there, Andrew Jackson, as president, decided these Indians are in the way. And they, they forcibly removed them. Thousands and thousands of them died. Um, the system of slavery became much crueler when they got down to what they call the Sugar Coast in Louisiana uh, because the conditions were just so severe in terms of heat and everything. And that's been documented in terms of deaths and, and stuff like that. So the lesson of history to me that was important of going down was learning what really happened, not uh, the myths of what people want to believe happened. Back in the flatboat era, there used to be floating brothels yep. on the river. They call them gunboats. There Why is that? Floating taverns out on mm -hmm. the river. Does the river still have any kind of a raffish air, or is it all now kind of tame and nondescript? The one raffish thing about the river now is casinos. People told you that, especially on the Mississippi, it could be really dangerous, and that in the whirlpools, the eddies, oh, whatever, yeah. the yeah. boat could sink. Yeah. Oh, it was worse than sinking. Yeah, they'd say, you're going to hit that first boil, the boat's going to spin around, you'll be unconscious by that time, the G-forces will be so great, the boat's going to capsize, you're going to go down, and you better prepare your family, because you're going to be dragged along the bottom of the river, and your body will be returned to your family. You won't even have any underwear on, you know. And, and my you Brooks found... Brothers shorts were kind of nervous, you know. 
<laughs> and you found that was not even close to the reality. As soon as I got on the Mississippi, there was a huge boil there, and there were two tugs coming. We went right through it. It was nothing. Along the way, Buck and his crew met all kinds of interesting people, including members of law enforcement. And so these deputy sheriffs, it happened more than once, would come down to the boat at night. You mean you all is traveling without any weapons? You know, them kids in the inner cities there where you parked down near Cincinnati, they're going to come storming out of the projects, kill you and burn the boat. And exactly the opposite was true. All the kids we met from the inner cities all the way down the river couldn't have been nicer. They wanted to sell us fish and, and all this stuff. So then we get down to Baton Rouge. And this, <clears throat> these kids come over from the inner city, African-American kids, really great guys. They wanted to sell us fish that they caught and a few other substances, shall we say. And then they go, uh, so what kind of heaters are you carrying? And I go, <clears throat> I'm a northern guy. Go, well, you don't need heat on the Mississippi River in the middle of the summer, you know. They go, Man, you are the dumbest white guy I've ever met, you know. I'm talking about heat, ammunition, you know. You about to enter Cajun country, and them Cajuns is going to come storming out of the swamps, kill you, and burn your boat. You need weapons, you know. And it was so ironic because here are these two people from exactly opposite polarities of the culture, and the solution is, America, get some guns. So you make a journey like that, you come away with some stories, don't you? What an adventure. <laughs> and the horror stories along the way, my gosh. We didn't get into how he broke uh, ribs on two different occasions. And uh, that's, of course, what makes for great travel sagas is when things go wrong. That's true. Again, the name of Rinker Buck's book is Life on the Mississippi. He has signed a lot of copies of it for various bookstores around Maine. You can find out more about the book and Rinker in the 207 section of our New Center Maine website or app.